Jackie Hassan as your host on this most epic journey through pop culture's past. Hold on to your butts. This is Nostalgia Theater. Brought to you by the Movie Tale Podcast. Up from the depths, 30 stories high, Hi everybody, this is Zaki, and welcome back to Nostalgia Theater. 2019 marks 65 years since Godzilla made his big, emphasis on big, screen debut, and this week's release of Legendary Pictures' Godzilla, King of the Monsters, is his 33rd appearance in a film. Uh, whether stateside or in his native Japan, Godzilla's appeal transcends time, demographics, and cultures, and he's earned his place as one of the most enduring pop culture icons of all time. But Why? What is it about the big guy that brings out such devotion? Well, here to help me unpack the Godzilla of it all is my special guest for this hour. He's the writer of Triassic World and Planet of the Sharks, and he's also one of the biggest Godzilla fans I know. Please welcome my friend Mark Gutlieb. Mark, thank you. No, thank you. It's uh, it's wonderful to be here. I, I couldn't be more thrilled to uh, to talk about uh, the big G. Well, the, and and this is you know we we've been uh, uh, sort of ships in the night trying to schedule around each other. Uh, we we were initially thinking about uh, having a conversation about King Kong, which you are also a big fan of, uh, and and I think that's that's sort of a good place to start. Where uh, Godzilla and King Kong are both they're they're linked, even though they were not intended that way. And I think part of that is just because we like big monster smashing stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, there's nothing more fun than watching these two, you know, uh, giant creatures, uh, you know, go around and and take down buildings and and entire armies, and, and then eventually each other. Um, in fact, with the movie we just uh, we, there was just a screening this weekend in here in L.A. of uh, the um, of the American version of King Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Which, which played beautifully with the crowd. I mean, it was almost it was pretty much a sold out sold out show and um you know there were kids there were adults and uh, everyone was there to have a great time and, and and they were really going with it you know it, it it's campy and obviously the american version they um they added a lot of footage mostly of newscasters talking about the um <laughs> right yeah the plot, the plot and the things you're about to see and you know filling in the holes that they took out from the uh, japanese version um, and of course, it all has a, has a, has a sort of campy uh, feel to it, but it works. And um, you know, it, it, in LA, you get a lot of audiences who all feel like they're above the material for, especially for things like this. But yeah. uh, this crowd was really into um, into just enjoying it and 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 loving everything about it, it dated as it was. Um, that just made it more fun. Well, and and uh, while we while we're on the subject of King Kong versus Godzilla, it, it is a myth, right? That that the American version has Kong win, while the Japanese version has Godzilla win. That's that is, that is that, not true. That is, it's an absolute myth. Okay, yes, absolute myth. It's it, and I mean it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting myth that that how you know that 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 popped up over time, but it's um, it, the, the only differences really are the fact that they. Um, and this happened with a number of the films that came out when they were taken into the U.S. Um, King Kong vs. Godzilla in particular. It was a movie that was almost a satire of the media hmm. industry, um, which is where you get some of the, you know, it, it, it kind of played like a comedy in, in Japan. Um, and so uh, and a lot of the jokes were at the expense of the U.S., um, and uh, and the and the and the American culture, and so obviously when it uh, was picked up for a U.S. distribution, um, you know it, it went through it went through sort of a, a secondary uh, cleansing, if you will. First, you know the usual, you know the editing. They want to you know get the running time to a point where it's it's palatable for the American audience. But even for this one, for in this version, um, in this movie, they wanted to uh, you know take out some of the uh, the more critical. Um, you know, commentary and jokes about about the, the United States and American culture. So um, it turned out that they <laughs> had not a hell of a lot of movie left to play with. So they, you know, <laughs> created this whole other all the other um, amount of um, you know newscasters sort of setting up the story and then jumping back to um, 
jumping back and forth in the action between the movie itself and then the new footage. And, um, you know, it, it's obvious, it, it's, it's glaring, but it's, you know, it's, it's part of the fun. So, so Godzilla's first introduced 1954. That's the, uh, the, the, the Japanese version, which was, uh, Gojira. And, right. and the film is, I mean, it's weird to think about that. This is the 1954. This is, I mean, it, the, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki are within people's memory. Like it's, not, you know, it, it's, it's weird to think back on that. You know, we we pure, we purely think of those events as as sort of historical data, but this is you know it's close enough in people's memory that the film is made in some way as a response to just sort of this new power that man has taken up on himself. Right. But by the time uh, uh, King Kong vs Godzilla comes out, King Kong vs Godzilla is only the third one. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. <laughs> he was so Godzilla was still the villain. Yeah, Godzilla is still the villain, um, and uh, it, it's 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 interesting because the you know even the second film with um, with uh, Anguirus, Godzilla raids again. Yeah, you know they're still they're still kind of keeping the whole nuclear testing, the dangers of that kind of technology, and the dangers of that kind of weaponry um, are still sort of the part of the story. And this is a, about a year after the original film, but now they've introduced a new creature in you know, new Kaiju um, in Angus, who I guess, you know, I guess they were sort of trying to position as sort of being his rival that maybe Ghidorah had, had come to be later on. Right. But um, they still kind of had that. They were still kind of playing that, that note in that film. Um, and then, you know, with King Kong versus Godzilla, you know, the, the, the character, um, you know, Godzilla, I you know, resonated with kids. Hmm. And, uh, and, and, and so, you know, when they do the, when they do the crossover, um, you know, seven years later, um, it, 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 again, played for not so much laughs, but played for more of a sort of a, it's a much different tone a much different approach. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a much lighter film. Yeah. Even the Japanese version is, you know, it's still playing where it's, you know, they're, they're the, the two of them are throwing rocks at each other and you know, <laughs> right. King Kong shoves a tree in, in Godzilla's uh, face, which by the way, got a huge, you know, cheer at the uh, at the um, at the theater on Saturday. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, but, so yeah, there's definitely that 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 change in tone. Um, I, you know, reason being, I you know, I, I'm wondering if it's because they and I don't have any specific uh, knowledge or, or, or expertise on this, but the idea is that um, by the third movie you know, you're kind of starting to repeat yourself a little bit with sure. the nuclear testing over. Now, now in King Kong versus Godzilla, you know, the idea that electricity uh, is something that King Kong can eat uh, was an interesting, um, though ridiculous sort of uh, premise. And it's the sort of thing that gives him his, his powers back and sort of it strengthens him. Whereas um, they introduced this strange concept that Godzilla himself is afraid of electricity. Um, you know, there's the, there's the, the, the image we've seen a hundred times of him walking through power lines and, um, you know, and, and yeah. in this movie, it's sort of the first time you really kind of see him kind of walk through him. He gets sparked, he gets shocked, he kind of steps back and they think they sort of play with that. Um, you know, because again, it's, it's, a, it's already a flimsy premise that these two are trying, <laughs> right. to, trying to fight one another. Um, <laughs> and so they have to kind of, they kind of have to, uh, um, you know, give it a little bit of depth, I guess. So. See, what, what I'm wondering is, because like you mentioned, there's a seven-year gap between Godzilla Raids Again and King Kong vs. Godzilla. So what, was Toho, were they done? And then, you know, because King Kong vs. Godzilla started with Willis O'Brien and King Kong meets Frankenstein. That was the initial idea. And yeah, that's, it's a, yeah, they, yeah they, they were talking about doing, um, talking about getting Frankenstein and Godzilla, I mean, uh, and King Kong fighting one another. And then that never really panned out apparently and so i guess this idea kind of kind of floated towards um you know putting godzilla into this mix in some in some way um but in terms of the seven year gap i don't actually know specifically why that happened yeah. um it's not, because it's, because it's after not, that it was just like rat a tat tat they for the next you know 10 12 years they oh, just yeah every, yeah every every year there's a new Godzilla movie yeah. um but yeah that that seven year stretch um you know i i don't know 
I don't know the real answer myself. I mean, yeah. I, you know, you, you hear you hear different different theories and and whatnot, but I mean, I think that's probably something that um, you know, it, uh, <laughs> probably try to find somewhere online that's some, sure. some some theory about it. But um, yeah, it, it's it's an interesting take, especially for the fact that it's it goes from Gojira to um, Raids Again. Uh, where he's fighting Ang- Anguirus, and it's also black and white. Whereas King Kong versus Godzilla is the first first one in color. Right. And so, so wh- what was your in? When when did you discover Godzilla, and what led to you just sort of devouring the entire series? So I'm from the East Coast originally, and when we were when I was living, in, uh, I'm from Connecticut actually, and so we had a channel uh, Channel Nine W O R T V. Okay. And they would do these um, Godzilla, not like really Godzilla songs where they were like, you know, all the same movies on the same day, though they did that. They would have entire weeks, uh, they would do Godzilla week. Hmm. And, you know, you know, when you're, you're a kid at that, you're that age, you're kind of like, whoa, what is, what is this? <laughs> um, so we, I would see them all on Channel 9 um, in, you know, for, uh, in, in uh, New York. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of things they would show the black and white ones, they show the color ones, you know, they'd show, they'd show all of them. They never showed the original, though. They never showed Gojira. Um, okay. At least I don't remember. It was usually the big, the big, uh, the fight, the, the big, you know, the big fighting, um, the fight movies. And, M- monster um, v. Monster, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, they, they, they'd show Godzilla vs. Monster, they'd show, you know, Get Your Three-Headed Monster, you know, the Skrull Monsters, those movies. So, you know, when you're a kid who's like, what? seven years old, six years old, you, you discover this, you think it's the greatest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and, you know, they, 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 always, I guess there's, there's that, there's that saying that, you know, whatever you liked when you were nine or 10 years old, you still like to some extent. Yeah. I mean, I'll still watch these movies today. Uh, you know, the, the, the new ones, uh, will come out and I will still think, oh, my God, this is, greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, you know, when, when, when the heist era came out, they sort of rebooted Godzilla in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. You know, there was a much different, um, a much different uh, approach. I mean, you know, there was still a uh, man in suit, but they had, you know, they had the miniatures, but they were a lot better. And they had, you know, certain, um, you know, uh, special effects that had improved over time. And then obviously they started introducing CGI into the, uh, into the mix. And you know, back then you're like, wow, they're really, they're really putting all their, you know, might and effort behind these movies. You know, for for movies that we saw when we were kids in the sixties and seventies, they were kind of silly. Now these films in the nineties are like, they were like serious and and badass, and and they were taking them, um, you know, they were taking them seriously and creating storylines that were really, um, you know, really, really really wild and spectacular. Um, you know, they weren't as silly as the only sort of fans, I guess myself, sure. you know, they weren't as silly as they were back in the you know, 60s and 70s. Um, you know, cause every, every, every other movie is during the show era. It seems like some, some aliens have come to earth <laughs> and right. they're trying to manipulate Godzilla. They're trying to kidnap Godzilla. They're trying to, you know, eliminate Godzilla. Whereas in the nineties you have the, you know, you have the United Nations Godzilla counterattack uh, center, um, you know, who have developed an entire uh, department of for, for either uh, eliminating him or, or, or disabling him. Right. Um, you know, so they, you know, so it, again, they, they, they seem to bring a little bit of a real world approach to these, uh, to these movies back then. And they're all, uh, they're all pretty great. I guess I guess what you're describing stands to reason is because by the time you get into uh, the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, it's all the the kids who grew up with them are now making, you know, they're plugging into it in a different way than the people who are making the movies for them. So right, right you would, exactly. So yeah. you, you know, there, there would be, you know, it, it's it's uh, the analogy, and this is an imperfect analogy, but like, uh, uh, you know, the Power Rangers movie that came out couple of years ago i don't know if you saw that i did uh you know to I, I did not grow up with that show i was not a fan of it but i really liked that movie because it felt like the person making it he he wanted to make the movie that he saw in his head right exactly yeah well it's funny you know, you know i i i have friends of mine who are also screenwriters and and work in the industry and you know half of them want to make movies that were 
you know, from their love of Star Wars and half of them want to make movies from their love of other things that they were grew up on. And one of those is Godzilla. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this new Godzilla coming out, I mean, you know, it, it, it's, there's so many, um, uh, so many great moments that you can see in the trailers, at least. Yeah. Where you can tell it's made by, uh, you know, a guy who seems to really love and understand the, the series. Hmm. Um, which is uh, coming from a much different place than, uh, you know, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin, who, you know, yes. back in 97, <laughs> 98, famously said, we don't know this, we don't know this character, we don't know this franchise, really, we don't care. Um, and it showed. I mean, it really showed. Now, you know, the, the 98 Godzilla, you know, we could probably do an entire show off of that alone. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, you know, it's funny, I, for the fans like myself who, who, who grew up with a lot of the earlier stuff, um, you know, we, 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 most of us kind of dismiss it as, you know, being, a, uh, it's not a Godzilla movie. I mean, heck, even Toho sort of, you know, uh, jumped into it with, I think it was, um, Final Wars. I think it was, it, no, it was, well, they, yeah, Final Wars, but yes, yeah, Final Wars, he was in Final Wars, but also I think in All Monster, uh, uh, All Out Monster Attack, okay. they talk about a, a New York sighting oh, of Godzilla. Oh, right, right, okay. And, and, and yes. one of the characters go, no, no, that wasn't that wasn't Godzilla. That wasn't Godzilla, um, right? Right, I read that. Okay. That wasn't Godzilla, yeah. <laughs> and um, but no, the final war, the final wars bit is great. That 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 that's always a, that's always a, a, a fun uh, moment. But um, but you know, it, it's funny. You, you meet people who are younger who grew up with some of the ninety stuff and who saw the ninety eight version who love it hmm. and remember loving it and to this day still love it. And you know, you can't fault them for that. You can't be like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's not Godzilla. No, because that's Godzilla for them. I mean, yeah. you know, it's the same thing with Star Wars. I mean, you know, whether you love or hate the prequels, you have other people who are younger who grew up watching the prequels like you and I grew up watching the original trilogy. Right. And they love it. And that's fine. And that's great because that, you know, that, that's, that's what they, that's what they've imprinted on. And that's what brought them into the, the franchise and the universe. So you can't really be like, no, 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 you're wrong. 98 is no good. Um, <laughs> that's true. That's a great point. You know, that, yeah, that's to, to them. That's Godzilla. That's great. Now, you know, if they decide they want to go out and, and, and learn more about it and watch the other movies, then they can make the decision for themselves. Oh yeah, maybe 98 wasn't so great. These are other better. Or they may, you know, they may, they may feel that 98 is still the, the movie for them. And that's <laughs> fine. You know, you know, you know I, one I, 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 I what, what I will say about the 98 film, which which I'm not a fan of, but um, the cartoon uh, uh, adaptation that they made to tie in with that, uh, that aired on Fox on Saturday mornings, was really good. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Um, it was uh, it was it was pretty good. I, now again, you know, we also remember the the animated show from from our childhood, the, the Hanna Barbera movie. one. Yeah, the Hanna Barbera. Which was so, that was know, my that, that, that was my introduction to Godzilla was the Hanna Barbera cartoon. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Uh gr- really? growing wow. it, it well cuz I growing up I, I lived in Saudi Arabia as a kid and so uh they showed these cartoons from the 70s uh and 60s, you know, in the 80s. So the King Kong cartoon from Rankin Bass and the Hanna oh, Barbera yeah. Uh, Godzilla cartoon were kind of my intro, and then there there was the there were these books, and I've talked about these on previous episodes. There, uh, uh, there was like a set of books about movie monsters, and they had orange spines, and so you had like you had Frankenstein and Dracula and you know Creature from the Black Lagoon, etc. And then you had King Kong and you had Godzilla, and and without fail, uh, the two books that would always be checked out, they were the hardest to get, were King Kong and Godzilla. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so, so you had to get your hands on. Them. I, that's exactly right. You know. So you, even as a kid, like in the currency of like what's getting checked out at the library, you're like, all right, there's something about Godzilla that people like. You know. So, so I, uh, you know, uh, the the cartoon was like my on ramp, and then those books were just like that was how I became familiar with the the various other monsters and everything else. Uh, but but definitely like I when I when I look at the the sheer volume of these movies. I find that fascinating, and then the, and you you'll have to explain this to me because I I'm not familiar uh, or I'm not I'm not fully cognizant of the differences between the the eras because there's like four distinct eras of Godzilla movies. Is that is that right? Yes. Yeah, so, it's the Showa era, the Heisei, the Millennium, and now what they're calling the Raiwa R E I W A era. 
So, so you're going to have to explain this to me. What a, uh, uh, why the differences, uh, and and b, what are the differences? Um, okay, well, the the differences come from the. Um, I'm trying to think how I could specifically explain this. It, it's based <laughs> on the emperor at the time who was in power. Okay. Um, and huh. so it, interesting. It, okay. So, for example, it's the Showa era. Um, which goes from, uh, well, for Godzilla's purposes, 54 to, um, which started with Gojira, to uh, 75's Terror of Mechagodzilla. Um, that was during the time of the reign of uh, the Japanese Emperor Hirohito. Okay. Um, the Heisei era uh, changed that after, I was fine, but the Showa era films were the ones that um, yeah, I think most of us saw when we were, when we were growing up as kids. To right. The, you know, the, uh, you know, the, um, yeah, the Godzilla vs. Mothra, Godzilla vs. Uh, you know, um, Sea Monster or Bira, uh, he, you know, Godzilla vs. Hedra, uh, Gigan, um, and so forth. And so that, uh, and you know, and, and a lot of people think that that's uh, that's the best era, okay? Because they, um, you know, because again, that's the ones where they grew up, um, grew up with, and that's the ones that they kind of have you know imprinted on the, the most, um, and. Uh, you know, and, and those are the ones that were the, uh, you know, a lot of the man's suit movies, um, those kinds of things. The heist era goes after that, and it starts um, with uh, Return of Godzilla, uh, Godzilla 84. Right. Um, and so the heist era is named, again, for the political era, the heist era, which started with 89, I think in 89, or 88 or 89, when Emperor um, Ak- Akito, I think that's how you pronounce it, Akihito, Akito, something like that, um, uh-huh. Was uh, was um, on the throne, and okay. so that era of films was the one where you know it was kind of a reboot era. You know, Godzilla had been out for like the last one was seventy five. Yeah. Um, and and Toho seemed to do this thing where they would kind of take a decade to kind of put the the, the, the character on hiatus. Okay. Um, so so so, so so Mark. So in other words, Terror of Mecha Godzilla comes out in nineteen seventy five. And it's not a situation where Toho's like, all right, we're done now. It's like, we will be back, but not, not for a while. Yeah. I mean, exactly. And, and they, and they sort of, so sort was, of, you know, was it because of diminished ahead. returns? Was it, I mean, were they like, I mean, you know what I mean? That, that idea of, of letting a franchise rest and reboot. I mean, that's not something we started doing in the States for like another few decades. So they were like way right, ahead right. of the curve. Um, yeah, I think there was probably some downturn. I mean, it's, it's like any, it's like any franchise, you know, for for films. I mean, people, how many times are going to see the same movie, you know? Right. And 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 I think once Godzilla um, was getting to that point, I think there were some films, you know, it, it listen, we loved them all as as, as their own, but they right. you know, when they were coming out, I think it was you know they were, you know, they were doing one of these each year, every year, every I year, yeah. Probably some. I imagine there was some. I mean, hell, I think there were even there was even I think in sixties or 64 they released Mothra versus Godzilla and uh, Ghidorah in the same same year huh yeah um, you're right yeah 64 65 I think 65 was um, was basically another you know uh, Ghidra versus uh, you know the big four uh, you know again I think it was Rodan Ghidra Godzilla in uh, Invasion of Astro, Astro Monster right and that's 65 so I think there's just you know it's either the studio or the public just kind of being like alright you know good we, we got we got plenty of Godzilla movies. We got, and so, <laughs> but I think there's also, I think there's there's a component where it's the international market too, the international audience, where you know the it's a it's a popular character in the U.S. or it's a popular character, you know, um, overseas, you know, in in general. And so when '84 came around, um, they decided to basically bring him back in the Return of Godzilla, which um, which was the uh, Godzilla '85 for us. Yes. Which is, that's, that's the first Godzilla movie I ever watched, was Godzilla 1985. Okay, yeah, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a movie that a lot of people kind of got their start with Godzilla, at least in the theater. Yeah. Because that's the first one you could see in the theater when, you know, when you were, when, when we were that, when we were that age. Right. You know, they weren't, sh- they weren't, they weren't, they weren't, they didn't have these retro, um, retro repertory theaters uh, in such a way that they did, that they do here now, here in LA and even up by you. Um, or all around the country in New York, you know, where they, you know, they show old movies a lot. I don't think it was much of a, they didn't have it, as many opportunities for that. They sure, so probably weren't showing a lot of Godzilla movies. Yeah. Um, so, so to see a Godzilla movie in a theater, 
was, you know, it was pretty wild. It was like, wow, this is great. And, you know, it was Godzilla 85. <laughs> Yeah, and and they brought in uh, Raymond Burr to reprise his character from uh, the 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 original, like the American version of the original movie. Yeah, I re- I have very distinct uh, uh, recollections of watching that film, and being I saw it on home vid in '87. I was in Edmonton, and again, first time I'm seeing a, a, a Godzilla movie. I'm seven, and I'm like, right. holy shit, this is amazing, you know? It's amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, even the poster was cool. I mean, the poster, the one sheet for that movie was just, was badass. It, you know, it's, it's a, it's a full poster of him, you know, Godzilla with his, with his claws out. He's overlooking the city and the city, I think is on fire or something like that. And there's jets coming out of his head. You're like, this is everything you want when you're seven years old in a movie poster. It's amazing. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then, you know, it, it sucked the same fate as the original movie where it got, you know, hacked to bits. They threw Raymond Burr in there. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, get Raymond Burr. <laughs> get Raymond Burr, yeah, and then you know, chop out a half hour of the movie. Um, you know, b- build a new short film within the movie and sort of plug it in there, and then, um, and uh, and and that one, I think, basically ignored everything after fifty four. I think so, it was basically a thirty year sort of sequel reboot. Okay, see, way. okay, so that that was my question. So uh, all of these reboots come from the place of saying. The original film happened, but none of the sequels. Pretty much. I mean, pretty much. You know, for the Showa era, everything is basically there's there's no real there's no real canon so much. I mean, there's some uh, continuity of the monsters and you know the kaiju themselves, but it's you know something that happened in let's say Son of Godzilla doesn't really resonate all that much. Or, may, you know, or or you don't need to have seen that movie for Godzilla vs. Hedra to make sense. You know, it's I just see. sort okay. of, they're all kind of their own thing. Now, they changed some of that in the Heisei era. Okay. For the Heisei series, the movies all kind of connect, or at least there's a through line in all of them. Okay. Except for, except for Return. Return is its own, is its own thing, basically. So oh, interesting. The real okay. Reboot, yeah, the real reboot for the Heisei era um even though Return for 85 is concluded in the Heist era, it doesn't really get started until Biollante. Um, huh. Biollante is 89. That's the one that was like, you know, even the U.S. was like, wow, we're getting another Godzilla movie in mainstream theaters hmm. um, because it was a movie that Miramax had picked up. Okay. And so it got, it got some release, and it's a pretty cool film. Um, it's basically, imagine if Godzilla was mixed or, or, or sort of crossbred with a giant rose bush okay. sort of thing. Okay. And, and then, um, and then it, uh, it goes, man. And it's, it's wild. It's basically Godzilla taking on, you can kind of say it's his sister in a way, okay. kind of. But by of the, you know, Yeah. By is his sister. Cause it's basically, now if I remember, cause I try to remember it's the, it's the scientist who crossbreeds some of Godzilla's cells with his own daughter's DNA, I think, and like a, like a, a tulip or a rose bush or something like that. And, and then the plant sort of becomes like, a, you know, like Audrey out of Little Shop of Horrors. And it just oh, okay. starts to devour <laughs> okay. things. And then, and then it's, and then, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, it, it takes on Godzilla. So, you're kind of introducing the heist there in a way that they're like, you know, we're going to try to make this some, give us some real world gravitas in a way, mm-hmm. but we're going to still be kind of crazy and out there and wild. Okay. Um, and as the, uh, as the, as the era would go um, and, and continue the, you know, they bring back the, they bring back the original gang of, of Kaiju that everyone knew and loved. I mean, right after that was, um, was uh, Godzilla versus um, King Ghidorah? I believe it was ninety one. Yeah, I think it was ninety one. That's right. And that's where you know they bring you know because they figure look they're going to bring back you know they're going to bring back if they're going to reboot anybody villain wise it's going to be Ghidra first. Um, and then ninety two was uh, where they brought back Mothra, and that was uh, Godzilla versus Mothra. Um, and you know it's it's a it's a good one. You know they they introduced some new. Um, 
they introduced some new characters. I think that that's the one they brought in uh, Batra, which was Mothra's brother. Yes. Um, and so he kind of takes on two, uh, two of these things. Um, but for me, the High Sayer um, really gets started probably because I'm a little bit biased with um, 93 and Godzilla vs. Mech Godzilla 2 because okay. Mech Godzilla has always been one of my favorite villains in, in all of the Godzilla franchise. Um, so so, who, so who, is, is, who is Mecha Godzilla? You got to explain this to me. Well, Mecha Godzilla started out as a um, as basically a, uh, a, a robot imposter that was uh, created by you know aliens basically to okay. to uh, take Godzilla out. Um, and so he's he's got that that approach in the Showa era. You know, he's he's that character where he's. Um, you know, he's, he's basically constructed by another worldly force to take uh, Godzilla down. Gotcha. But in in the 93 version, um, and I've always kind of felt that this is where they get a little bit of Pacific Rim um, from this movie, hmm. is he's created basically by the, you know, by a military force as the ultimate weapon to stop Godzilla. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, so just completely yeah. different. Completely different, right? Yeah, and and but but that technology is is brought back from um, from uh, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah, because at the end of that movie, um, Ghidra is or Ghidorah is is uh, is destroyed, and they go uh, they go you know into the future and rebuild him like a cyborg, and so he's got him you know his, 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 in the, the last fight with Godzilla. You know, his middle head is torn off, his wings are destroyed, you know, and, and he's just, you know, he's, he's beaten up. And so they go back in, or they go forward in time and they, I think it's forward in time, um, and they construct him and then they bring Mechagidra back in time to take on Godzilla and, uh, and then Godzilla beats him again. But the technology is the bottom of the sea. And so they huh. like, wait a minute, we have this, we have this, you know, this technology. Why don't we, you know, use it? as a way to, you know, solve our problem. And so that's how Godzilla vs. Mech Godzilla 2 is, is starts. I mean, the movie opens literally with the shot of Mecha Ghidra's head. Um, oh, okay. And, uh, and so, and so they're like, you know, they're like, all right, well, we have this technology that we got from the movie two, two movies ago. And so uh, let's build it. And so that's where the, UNGCC comes in and they now have this, uh, you know, this through line where um, they're going to try to, you know, wipe them out with this, um, that this, 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 this military security force that, that is uh, throughout the rest of the films. And then there's the other uh, aspect of it where there's a psychic um, subplot that starts with Biolante and there's a uh, character that is sort of, she has a psychic link with Godzilla Okay. And she's in all the movies throughout the Heiste era, and so so there's there's a really kind of a, a different approach to um, to the films for this era in that they all kind of connect. Um, you know, there's different there's different kaiju and different uh, uh, you know uh, introductions and storylines, but they all kind of connect. I mean, even uh, even in '93's uh, Godzilla film, they introduced Baby Godzilla. Right. Who gets older in ninety four and older in ninety five? So you know, so so they're 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 keeping a sort of a through line, all the way to uh, Godzilla versus Destroyer. So so Godzilla which, uh, versus Destroyer. That's where he they they kill him off at the end. He basically dies. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and it's, it's, and it's, it's yeah. And that was with the intent of okay, now Sony's going to be doing their thing, so we're going to get out of the way. Right. Yeah. They at the time, I think yeah, they they were they were. It was time to put the American version uh, out there and uh, and get started on that and uh, and then I think Toho was kind of kind of see look let's see how this goes hmm. because um, you know and then you know and then it's another way to drum up more excitement for the character so ninety five they uh, they they finally they finally killed him huh. um, you know it's it's a it's a pretty if you haven't seen Godzilla vs Destroyer it's it's terrific really um, okay. It's actually a very it's a it's a kind of a heart wrenching film too. Hmm. Um, it's also um, 
There's also another thing going on through the heist era with some of the villains, and that there is this concept of of um, of creatures of, of small creatures becoming bigger ones. Okay. Um, the Dorats in '93, I'm sorry, in the in the uh, King Ghidorah in '91 um, become Ghidra, um, and then uh, even in Destroyer, the uh, the main main you know main uh, version of destroyer is actually a bunch of smaller creatures who kind of i don't know i guess they kind of sort of combine in a way you know they kind of like sort of they sort of they sort of become a different form yeah um which is something you see happen in in a a couple of the high safe films and there was something that toho really seemed to dig because (laughs) they do it in in a few movies and i think it's a great idea because you get to see more creatures you get to see more you know different different monsters uh you know develop into bigger ones um, which is kind of cool, but yeah, no, Godzilla versus Destroyer was basically the end of Godzilla, and then, um, but you know, it, you know the, the last shot is you know Godzilla Junior now being the full grown Godzilla, so it's kind of like the new one is ready to go once once you're ready to come back to the series. And um, and so 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 here's my question. So I mean, we we were talking about the '98 movie. Uh, it, it the when, when I look at the development of Godzilla '98, it sort of reminds me of another Japanese property that that was turned into a movie uh, in the '90s, which is Super Mario Brothers. Uh, yeah. wh- where I look at it, and I'm like, how did were the rights holders just like out of the room? Like how, you know what I mean? Like it the <laughs> the end result is so far afield from what I have to imagine they would have wanted. Like it, you know, yeah. it, both of them in this because because the, the thing with the Godzilla ninety eight, which you know, we, like I said, we were talking about it earlier. I mean, the the he doesn't look like Godzilla. No, and I you know, and it's and I'm wondering you know, because you know, the whole they had talked about the, you know the the big reveal of the design, big reveal yeah. of the creature, you know, right? I remember that. Looking. And I, and we were all like, wow, it's gonna be amazing. I mean, I remember. I mean, first of all, look. I mean, we were getting an, we were getting an American Godzilla. Um, and you know, say what you will, Ron Emmerich and Dean Devlin were the guys to make this movie because of everything else they'd done prior. Yeah. I mean, these guys were the last word in disaster films. Right. So this was going to be an amazing movie. Um, you know, we saw the teasers and I mean, I remember, I remember New Year's Eve, they had the New Year's Eve. Yep. Uh, oh, I remember that. Yep. Year's Eve teaser, yeah. Where he's not, where his tail hits the ball, um, in Times Square and it goes careening into the crowd. I mean, I was like, man, if the movie's like this, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> Um, you know, and and by and, the way, um, let's let's pause and appreciate the fact that here is a mainstream uh, marketed at kids movie where the tagline is a metaphor for penis size. That's exactly. That's exactly. <laughs> size does matter. Here, kids. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because because all you, you, you would drive around town, you know, we have all these bus shelters everywhere in the city, and you would see these bright green posters that just said "size does matter." Yep. Where you went, billboards, bus, bus shelter posters everywhere, and uh, you're like, all right, you know, they're they're, they're 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 keeping everything under wraps. It's all you know, even the, even the posters are just words, um, you know. And of course, there's the, there was that amazing Taco Bell cross promotion. Oh, I remember with, that too. Uh, with the Chihuahua going, you know, here lizard, lizard, lizard. So we were all we were all just we weren't we were ignoring all the signs. Yeah, we right. Signs. Well said. Yeah, we were just so excited, and then. Um, yeah, then the movie came out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you get that first look at him, and you're like... Um, Is that it? Uh, okay. <laughs> Not... Yeah, I mean, exactly. Because you know, your, your first thought is, oh, they're going to do two forms, or he's going to be in two different versions. He's going to be look. He's going to look different. He's going to evolve or change into something, right? And um, no, he didn't. He stayed that way. And I mean, look, you know, you, you got to give the movie credit for a couple of things. I mean, they, they come up with some very strange ideas. First of all, New York looks great, by the way. Let's just say that. New York, yeah. they, they shoot New York beautifully in the movie. Now, of course, you know, half that was, you know, uh, done here in the Sony lot. Um, but uh, I mean, I remember we were we were actually on the Sony lot for something and we got to peek our head into one of the um, into one of the uh, sound stages and uh the inside of the soundstage was Madison Square Garden, okay. where the uh, where the nest was. So I was like, "That's this is pretty cool." I and mean, you get to look in, you know, they, they've recreated you know MSG inside of a soundstage. You know, at that age, you know, I was like, "Wow, this is all amazing. This is great." Um, 
but um, but you know, so they so, so but I, but the idea of, the, of using the MSG as a nest was kind of a cool. The, the idea of the of, of Godzilla having babies and eggs and baby Godzilla's running around, you're like, okay, that might be kind of cool, but you know, right. I don't know if I'm digging where we're going with this. And then of course, you know, when they when they capture. Godzilla, you know, spoiler alert, and they capture Godzilla in the Brooklyn, I think it's the Brooklyn Bridge, yeah. in the, uh, in, in the, in the wars. I'm like, okay, that's actually kind of a cool idea. But, man, there was so much that we had to wade through. <laughs> yeah, that, well, I mean, songs. what I remember most is, is first of all, that, that poor actress, uh, Maria, Maria Patillo, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, she she's taken so much crap for a performance in this movie. I feel bad piling on, but I mean, I remember that was one of my clearest memories of watching that film. Was like she is really bad in this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah well, I mean, I, and, and and look, I like I like Matt, Matthew Broderick. I think he's great. Yeah. I don't know what he was doing in this movie. I mean, it just it felt like a the whole casting felt weird all across the board. You know, it didn't, it didn't like anybody belonged in this movie. But no, but you're right. Maria Maria Patillo was like sp- particularly stood out. Of, yeah, it's a shame. I mean, a it's a shame because Hank Azaria. Who, I mean, it's like you. Most of the actors in here, you're like, geez, I wish, uh, like they built a movie that lived up to you guys because you guys are all. I like all of you, even if this yeah. movie doesn't bring out your best, you know, but it's, it's what I remember following, uh, uh following the, the development of that film is even, you know, before, uh, be- before Emmerich and Devlin, you know, it was going to be Jan de Bont and it sure sounded like he was developing a movie that was much truer to the, the, the original conception of the character. Yeah. Well, the Jan de Bont, well, I have, I have a, I have a version of the, I think it's a Rossio. Yes. Elliot. Script, um, which wasn't a bad, I think that's the one that Yandabat was going to direct, um, where uh, they actually had another kaiju. They had a, a, right. it was a giant griffin. It was like a griffin, fight. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, um, you know, it, it, again, it's a decent script. I don't know much about it. I remember reading it years ago, but, um, you know, it's, it's it, it was, a, you, I would read this and go, man, I kind of wish they'd made this movie. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, it was Yandabat. And then, actually, Years before that, you know, there was the Steve Miner movie, the one that Fred Decker wrote. Um, oh, it was interesting. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, uh, 3D, and um, and that was going to be, I think, in the, I think, late 80s because, I, yeah, I think, yeah, they, they were talking about doing the late 80s because Steve Miner had just, uh, I'm sorry, Fred Decker had just done, I think, Night of the Creeps. Um, I may be, I may be screwing up the entire timeline on this, but um, he had he had written. Oh no, I'm sorry, it may have been before that. It may have been before Night of the Cruise, but he had written something that got him noticed, and they were talking about Steve Miner had this had this idea for doing a Godzilla movie, doing the whole thing in 3D. Okay, because you know this was during the 80s 3D craze that that came and went very quickly, um, <laughs> and uh, and and that was kind of a cool cool concept as well. Um, but again, you know, I, I, at the time, I think it was just, it was just too big. I mean, I think, you know, making a Godzilla movie, um, you know, for, for, you know, for, for the eighties market had to be, you know, had to be a bigger movie than you, know, you couldn't just make it like a little $5 million flick. You had to kind of put some real money to it. And I think a lot of people at the time, cause Godzilla, you know, wasn't really a proven commodity back then so much. So I right. think it was kind of tough to kind of get a American studio to be like, to come jump on about doing a giant a giant, uh, you know, kaiju film. Yeah. So, so the 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 Millennium series, and correct me if I'm wrong, but was it basically cause the the intention was not for them to come back so quickly with the Japanese films, but after the the Sony movie, they were like, no, we gotta we gotta fix this. That's exactly right. Yes. I mean, the, the yeah, they they were like, no, no, we gotta we gotta kind of retake, we gotta reclaim the the the, the, the character back. Uh, but it's interesting. The Millennium series actually goes back to the Showa era approach of having standalone films. Okay. Um, oh, in interesting. Fact, okay. Of the six, of the six Millennium films, only two of them connect, which is Godzilla against that Godzilla 2002, um, and then uh, Tokyo SOS, which is the one after 2003. Okay. Um, and uh, you know. Uh, the, for me, the Millennium Era is two movies that I absolutely love. Hmm. Um, GMK, which is, uh, you know, All the Monsters Attack with um, author G- uh, G- Ghidorah and Baragon. Um, okay. And then Final Wars. F- 
Final Wars is the unholy, uh, unholy, unhinged uh, sort of matchup of X Men, The Matrix, and Destroy All Monsters, and it's nice. just bonkers. And you know, you know, it's going to be insane before you even watch it because it was directed by Roy Kittimore, okay. the man who gave us verses and um, and uh, oh, what's the I, I, I always mispronounce this character's name Arami or Arami or something um which is basically this this, this you know uh, female character going around killing everybody I can't remember the name of the movie but um mm-hmm. but Rupert Kittimer was known for making these crazy off the wall wild um you know almost cartoonish films I mean versus is a perfect example I mean he's, he was really good at making these kind of things right you know be him and um, um and uh, uh the guy the guy who's in versus uh, Tech uh oh, what's his name I'm, I'm blanking on that, of course, because we're, we're we're recording this. <laughs> it now. happens. Um, but um, but but I want to say it's it's tax something. But anyway, the point is that um, you're like, wow, the guy who did first is doing a Godzilla movie, hmm. and this is going to be amazing. And it's funny. Uh, it's one of those movies that you, you talk to a lot of people, and it's it's at least in my experience, they either love it or hate it. Okay. It's really strange. Um, you know, I personally love it because it's just so crazy, and it's so off the wall. And there's a hundred things happen at the same time, and the pacing is insane, and just doesn't let up. And it's basically destroy all monsters where they bring everybody back. Hmm. They they kind of redesign every kaiju that's in you know the entire franchise, and um, and they all get they all get a moment. They all get a moment with him. Um, to do their thing, whether it's a small little thing or, you know, or a massive, uh, you know, fight or something. I mean, it's the first movie where we got to see Gigan again, um, you know, in the, in sort of a modern era. Okay. And they make him totally bad. He's got like, you know, instead of a claw, I think he's got like dual chainsaw hands, stuff like that. He's got the, <laughs> the massive saw on his chest and everything. And, um, and I love it. I mean, it's, it's, it's terrific. It also introduces, um, a new sort of, uh, I think his name. I think it's named uh, Kaiser Ghidorah or something. So they they even give Ghidorah a whole new, uh, whole new, uh, 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 a whole new look and a whole new sort of um, uh, uh, you know uh, character of some sort. Yeah. Um, and then I think yeah. So it's, and 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 again, a great and at the and it was the it was the uh, the 50th anniversary film too. So that's why I cut, they kind of wanted to bring everybody back. I mean, hell, we even get to see. You know, Anguirus again, and you know all these monsters that we haven't seen. And and you see, by the way, uh, American Godzilla get dispatched very. Well, yeah, there, yeah there, there was a moment, yeah, where where Godzilla and Zilla, I believe, fight. In, I think it was Australia. Yeah, I think it's somewhere in Sydney. I think. So so this um, is so Toho has taken the TriStar Godzilla and they've renamed him Zilla because TriStar Zilla. took the god out of Godzilla. Right. Yeah, I believe <laughs> so. Yeah, I kind of yeah. love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, but yeah. So Final Wars is a blast, and it's um, it's it's it's. Uh, but again, I think a lot of people kind of look at it like you know, it's uh, you know, it's just it's it's this, it's this mashup, this, this mashup of, of 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 everything that you've loved about the franchise, and it's just throwing a blender and just you know, it just goes. Um, and uh, and it's you know, it's a lot, but, but a lot of people don't like it because. I, they feel it's too silly or feel it's too, you know, it, it cribs off what they feel too many other movies. And, you know, I don't, I, I, I disagree. Sure. I think it's just an absolute wild ride where you get to sort of revisit, you know, the entire, you know, the entire history of, of, of the, uh, of the franchise in a way. Um, and uh, by the time it's all over, you're exhausted. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just the, the pacing is just, you know, crazy. So, well, with that in mind, I want, and and we're we're in the midst of a new era, which uh, we'll we'll touch on briefly. But I did want to get your thoughts on uh, the the legendary uh, version of the character. I'm assuming uh, you're much happier with the legendary incarnation than you are with the TriStar incarnation. Oh yes, <laughs> by all means, yes, by by, <laughs> by leaps and bounds. Um, now, I mean, look, I, it's funny, I. I I know a lot of people complain about the 2014 version because there's not enough Godzilla. Yes. Um, but you know, it, you know, with, with the new one coming out, we've been actually watching a lot of the, um, a lot of the, the older films. In fact, there's a couple of, um, theaters in LA that are showing, um, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the movies again, sort of kind of, 
you know, with the popularity of the character in this new movie, they're, they're kind of, uh, they're programming a whole bunch of different series and different, um, different events. And uh, so we get a, get a chance to watch a lot of the, of the movies again. And, you know, in some of the earlier films, Godzilla doesn't show up until a half hour into the movie. Right. And then you get him again at the end. And so, you know, I would always say to people, like, you know, if you don't like 2014, how many Godzilla films have you seen? Because hmm. that's kind of, now again, you know, in a modern version, maybe you're expecting to see a lot more Godzilla. But, you know, I would argue that, A, he's always been, He's always been kind of the, you know, the, the star of his films, but to a point. Um, and B, I personally love the Muto. Right. Those creatures are terrific. I mean, you know, first of all, they have a great storyline where, you know, they're basically two lovers on the run and, and, and they're, they're, they're trying to get to San Francisco, you know, to you know, basically, you know, have, have babies. I mean, it's, it, it was the most wonderful love story in a movie all of 2014. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, come on. That moment where they're nuzzling, you know, the one is nuzzling the other one with a giant nuclear, you know, uh, uh, warhead in its mouth. And I mean, that was that was truly romantic, you know, if you ask me. <laughs> um, but uh, but the and then of course, that's a great uh, battle at the end. Yes. So I personally love 2014. Um, the new one just looks like it's it's just insane. I mean, you know, and, and you get Michael Doherty, you know, uh, writing and directing it. And this guy, you know, look. Trick or Treat is a modern Halloween classic. Hmm. Um, Krampus, you know, is, is also, is also great. And, um, you know, so here's a guy who, who gets, at least I think gets, gets, gets the, 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 the feel of, I think he's got his finger on the pulse of pop culture in a lot of ways. And hmm. so I think he's the guy who's really well, um, well suited to doing a Godzilla movie. And, um, and just from what I've seen and what I've heard about it, it sounds like he nailed it. And, and, and it's like you said before, you need someone who knows and loves this character in this franchise to make a really good Godzilla movie. And I think, um, I think we have the guy in, in Mike Doherty. Um, I think he's really, uh, I think he's really pulled it off. Do you, do you um, know anything about the Godzilla versus Kong, which is scheduled for next year? Uh, the only thing I know, obviously, we you know we know it's the director um, who the director is, and he's 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 more he's mainly a horror guy. Um, right. Done, I think he did your next and the guest, um, and then uh, I do know that the uh, it it much like the Kong Skull Island film, it won't which be I loved just, by the way. I loved that movie. By the way, yeah. yeah, and yeah, I wish we got a, a chance to chat about that. I loved Kong uh, Skull Island. I loved what they did with the with with Kong I love the setup of the you know the time the you know the era that they set the movie in and I loved the um the the all the creatures and all the things that he he fought with um that is sort of the approach they're taking on Godzilla versus Kong okay there will be other creatures and other monsters and things in there I don't know if that means that they're going to fight and team up if they're going to fight amidst all this stuff I have no idea Hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know about all that, but I do know that it won't be just the two of them. I would hope so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, of course the, the question everyone asks is, is, everyone's asking is the, you know, what, what's the size difference? The size issue. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. So I'm guessing, uh, Kong gets much bigger over the next 40 years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that they can uh, they can take each other on, but I don't even know where it's where it's taking place or anything. I don't I don't know much about it, but I just do know that the uh, that it's um, it's uh, it's coming out uh, what twenty twenty one, right? Yeah, you know, it's yeah. it, twenty twenty. It's uh, next year. Oh, it's twenty twenty. Okay, yeah, so it is next year. Yeah, yeah. So, it's 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 funny because because when the movie when it was first announced after after uh, twenty fourteen Godzilla, I was like, eh. Okay, I guess you know because because in my head I'm like okay, well it's gonna be a bunch a couple of CGI characters throwing each other around and I I just I, I don't know how interested in that I am and then and then I watch Skull Island and I'm like I want to see Kong versus Godzilla now <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah well I, I and I and I'm with you I mean when they had that whole sort of that 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 code at the end of the movie where they set up the four of them coming for this movie I mean look I th- I think there's one thing we also have to really kind of stop and, and 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 give credit where due and really kind of reflect on the time we're in right now at least for 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 these film releases we have we have a major hollywood studio not just giving us one of these movies but giving us multiple films 
films like this. I mean, Legendary has given us not just the Godzilla movies, but the Pacific Rim films. Yeah, that's and right. Say what you want about those as well, but I'm, you know, when Pacific Rim came out, I was sitting there in this theater with, you know, with this, you know, idiotic smile on my face, going, "My God, they're making, they're making movies that are making me feel like I'm ten years old again." And right. they're and they're not doing them where like where they're above the material or they're kind of looking down. There's no judgment. They're literally making just full on monster movies. Right. And, you know, and, and, you know, right here, you know, here, I'm sure by you as well, you know, where you're at, I mean, there are billboards everywhere with Godzilla and, and, and Ghidra, you know, yeah. uh, fighting each other. And I'm just like, this is, what a time to be alive. I mean, this is, you know, it's incredible. I mean, we, you know, just, you know, these are movies that we saw, you know, on bootleg cassette tapes when we were kids, you know, you, they, they weren't on DVDs. They weren't getting, released by, you know, uh, studios that we knew. They were, they were you know, you, you bought them at, 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 at Comic-Cons and horror conventions. And right. them, you know, uh, recorded off of Japanese Laserdisc, you know. And, you know, you couldn't watch these movies. They weren't readily available. And now, you know, you can go to the Criterion channel and they've got, you know, they've got seven or eight of the Showa films that they've restored. In fact, over the weekend, we watched Pair of Mecha Godzilla because, you know, I, was, I knew we were gonna, you and I were going to sit down and chat. So I wanted to see what Criterion had done because they announced that they'd gotten seven or eight titles um, for the uh, you know for their service. Um, uh, I think last year. So I and I don't think they put them on disc yet. I, I think they're just uh, streaming. But you know, Criterion does an amazing job on all of their on all of their releases, both in the you know the uh, in the restoration and yeah. obviously all the, all the extras and stuff. And I'm telling you, we watched Terror of Godzilla. I see this movie. You know, I don't know. 15, 20 times. It's like I'd never seen it before. I mean, hmm. it looked incredible. It looked like they shot this last year. I mean, it was gorgeous. Now, I'm guessing they all look like this, but man, they did an amazing job on this. But but even even you know, even on uh, even if you go on Amazon or, or I think there's a there's a service called Tubi T U B I um, where it's all free and you can find you know Straw Monsters. You can find you know a number of uh, Godzilla films, mostly the older ones. But you know, it's every, they're everywhere now, so you can you can see them a lot easier. But the fact that you have a major Hollywood studio not just distributing them on DVD, but making new ones and putting them out for you know for a mainstream audience, it's 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 incredible. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, and and uh, uh, I know you got to get going, but before we wrap up, I, I wanted to ask you first your thoughts on the current. Uh, era we're in where we got the one live action film which is Shin Godzilla and then you got a bunch of CGI animated ones yeah the, it's funny I, I thought Shin Godzilla was fantastic um, and I love the um, the approach they took in that he had, and, and uh, Shin Godzilla well, just ignores everything it's like this is first time anyone has seen Godzilla yeah, Shin Godzilla is basically the uh, the new reboot. Where, okay. you know they, they I mean now it's funny because they, they, they sort of reference the name and the reference, you know, past history of it, okay. you know, of, 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 the, of, of the character and, 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 but they're like, oh yeah, that, that's Godzilla. But, you know, it's sort of a new, he looks entirely different. You know, he comes out of the water as this like, you know, this, this almost like a tadpole of some kind, um, mm. you know, with, with, I mean, and it, and it's, what I love about it is that it takes that same approach to the legendary movies where it's all very much real world and very, you know, sort of intense. So, you know, Godzilla comes out of the water with this goggly eyed face and these gills that are spouting blood as it's pouring, you know, coming to the street and smashing boats and cars and everything. And it's, it's not doing it. At, it doesn't seem to be doing it out of like, you know, sort of a, I'm going to destroy these things. It's like I'm out of the water now and I'm moving to another location and these things are in my way and I don't mean to knock them over, but they're in my way. Gotcha. You know, it doesn't seem like there's, this, there's this intent to destroy. And then, um, and then it evolves into what we, you know, what the, the, the character we know, but even so, you know, there are these new designs where, I mean, it's mouth opens up when, when, when he, when the Godzilla shoots this, uh, you know, this, his, his beam, his energy beam, you know, it, the, his mouth opens like from like three different, three different like jaws or something. It's it's very very cool, um, and of course he has all these new weapons, new things that he can do that uh, you know we've never seen Godzilla do before, and it's amazing. Now, obviously, you know the, the the main criticism of the film is that you know there's a lot of talking, sure, um, and it's a lot of people in 
conference rooms talking about what's happening. But that's the point. The whole movie is basically a, um, you know, it's a satire, um, and a satire of it so much, but it, it's a commentary on how Japan handled the um, Fukushima uh, uh, nuclear um, oh, disaster. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's, it's sort of a commentary on that and the fact that, you know, Godzilla's, Godzilla is destructive and dangerous, but um, bureaucracy is a lot worse. <laughs> and that's sure. basically the concept of the movie and it's um you know and it's it's but it's a, i mean it's absolutely fascinating from start to finish um the netflix animated movies are um they're an interesting bird <laughs> um <laughs> they they kind of uh, I, I admittedly i've not seen the third one yet i've seen the first two the third one i think hit netflix a couple months ago and i just haven't had a chance to watch it yet but um they are interesting movies. Uh, you know, it all takes place like 20,000 years in the future or something like that. And, you know, the Godzilla is a, Godzilla is the size of like a, you know, like an entire city or something like that. I mean, he's very massive, very large. And, and the world is basically ended and everyone's living in space and these ships and, and, and there are these different factions, and different cults all kind of sort of working together, but not working together, the kind of different agendas and sort of Godzilla's, it feels like he's sort of secondary storyline. Okay. Um, and I and I know a lot of people kind of kind of complain about that, but it's interesting. It's a very um, it's a very unique take on Godzilla and the whole sort of mythos, even in how each of the kaiju are portrayed. Like Mechagodzilla is portrayed as literally like a city of some kind, um, and then you know I think I think Ghidra's going to show up as like this energy sort of force. And but it's these are not these are not you know heavy fighting films. You know, it's a right. lot of um, it's a lot of philosophy, really, um, and I think a lot of people have, have kind of sort of uh, they're not they're not they're not cool with that so much. They want to see more fighting, which I can understand, but but I do appreciate the different take on on the character right. and on the uh, and on, on the way that the uh, you know, that they that they portray the um, you know the monster and everybody around him. Well, so, yeah. I mean, with that in mind, I mean, we've covered all the ways this character has reinvented himself. I mean, 65 years, and Godzilla is not in danger of going away anytime soon. Uh, you know, uh, give me the high level. What What is it? What is it about this character? He doesn't speak right he has no, no he has no backstory he has no uh you know uh, social problems that we need to worry about but well, he he's a force of nature what is it about him yeah i mean he i mean he has he has somewhat of a backstory i mean his backstory is well sure yeah sort of but I, I meant it's not like he, he doesn't have an origin like like uh, Bruce Wayne's parents getting killed in an alley you know what i mean oh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> um what what is the appeal? I I you know again I think the appeal is really in how you approach the franchise. I mean, do you want to see movies that have some sort of commentary in them? You'll find them in a Godzilla movie. Do you want to see movies that are just about abject destruction and 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 near self indulgent levels of 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 chaos and calamity? You know, for the for the filmmakers making them, you'll find that in a Godzilla movie. I mean, you know, do you want do you want do you want to see the absurd? You'll see that in a Godzilla movie. I think what I'm trying to get at is that you can you can find just about everything you want in a Godzilla movie huh. because it's all there. Um, it's just in how it's just in what you're looking for. You know, I mean, you know, you you have you have you have certain kaiju that have come from different origins that are a commentary on you know, political and social or, or, or environmental, um, you know, uh, 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 issues in, you know, obviously in Japan, um, at the time, um, each film, a lot of films have certain things that are being said about, uh, about the time the movies are taking place. Um, but even the new ones, I mean, you know, the new ones are, are just, are about spectacle and, and about, you know, it's everything we go to see in a you know a summer blockbuster movie, and you know this new one in particular. It just it has, you know, it's got the big four in there, you know, and and they're all going to start fighting one another. And these are movies that a lot of us grew up with, and now we get to see them in a way that's you know it's the the height of the technology. So you know the appeal. I think it's it's just that they there's something for everyone in these movies. 
Well, there we go. I think that's a perfect place to put a pin on this conversation. I think, I, first of all, this I'm I'm so uh, glad you were able to make the time, and I'm this is everything I I hoped for, which was uh, me sitting at the feet of the master, just like uh, learning about Godzilla. So, so thank you for that, and I I, I hope people listening uh, get as much out of it as as I have just talking to you in the last hour. Well, thank you for having me on, and I hope I was able to, uh, you know, offer at least uh, some insight, limited as it may have been. But there, but there it is. Well, well, um, I, 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 I want to, uh, yeah. Mark, I want to put it out in the world now that uh, when Godzilla versus Kong comes out, I would love to have you back on, and let's talk about the King Kong side of this conversation. Absolutely, I'd love to be, uh, love to be back on when we're ready for uh, for that discussion. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, so before I let you go, is is there anything you're working on right now that you want to hype up and put the put the word out about into the world? Um, nothing really, uh, that I'm working on so much. Uh, I mean, there's a, a couple of things, but there's nothing I can really talk about right now. Okay. Um, but, uh, anybody who's looking to watch a Godzilla movie, uh, in LA is, um, going to have a chance to do so between the months of June and September. Uh, if I can give a quick shout out to my friend, uh, who's doing something called secret movie club. He's showing 10 Godzilla movies on 35 millimeter between hey. June and September. Nice. And so, um, yeah, so that's going to be pretty cool. So, if, uh, you know, if, if anybody watching out there wants to see some of the movies in a theater, which you never get to do anymore, um, that's probably the, that's probably your best bet. Very cool. And um, if, if people listening want to reach out to you, do you have like a Twitter or a social media presence? That I am you're... on Twitter. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. You can you can send me all kinds of uh, t- uh, tweets correcting everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on uh, I'm on um, Twitter at, at Cram Beal Talk, which is basically my um, my name backwards. Oh, so, okay, Cram Beal. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. It took me a second. <laughs> which yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I'm I'm fasting. I'll blame it on that. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, well, as for me, folks, if you want to reach out to me, of course, you can find me at my website, zackiescorner.com. That's Z-A-K-I-S corner. That's also my Twitter. That's also my Instagram. Uh, please check out uh, the regular movie film show where uh, Brian Hall and I will be dropping a commentary track for the uh, 1998 Godzilla movie, which Mark and I were just talking about. And uh, we will have our conversation about the new film Godzilla, King of the Monsters, in just a few short days. Please go to iTunes and leave a review. Leave a star rating. Every little bit helps, not only for this show show but also for the regular movie film show let me know what you think and you can also email me at moviefilmpodcast at gmail.com and also hit like on our facebook page facebook.com slash moviefilmpodcast uh that wraps up this episode but on behalf of my guest mark gottlieb my name is Zaki hassan i hope you will join me again soon for our next foray into uh, the canyons of nostalgia theater thanks everybody